everyone, uh, welcome back to another YouTube episode. If you're new to my channel, my name is Janosch. I'm a professional concept artist. I work in games and I draw, paint and design environments and characters all day. So I recently just finished uh, this painting here. I usually paint every day and I draw every day. And for the last couple months, I try to focus more on finding myself. And what I mean by that is I want to find my own inner artistic voice. So when I did this painting, I had a lot of interesting ideas for story. It took me like this stage right now, took me around 60 to 70 minutes, I would say. So I was quite okay with the result. I knew I wanted to do something which had a little bit more of a historical background. So something more of the Greek ancient type of civilization things, um, because this is something where my, my inner child comes out. So I knew I wanted to do that, but of course I always want to tell a story. So I started with this painting and I knew I wanted to have these giant statues um, killing these snakes because I had the idea of betrayal in my mind, that I want to resemble a betrayal at some point. But after the 60, 70 minutes, um, I realized that it wasn't working. Like it wasn't conveying any story or anything that I actually had in, in my mind. So what I did for the painting, I just let it stay for I think two days. So I didn't touch it. This is something I want to talk about today is, uh, and I, I don't want to say just do not give up or something because this is sometimes very easy to say, but I want to say step back, take a breath, don't think about it for a while. And if it's important for you, or if you think you want to work more on it, you should work more on it. Don't focus about doing something quick because we're living in the society of posting an image every day. Put it by the side, okay? Because what I did after two days, I came back to the image and I looked at it with completely fresh eyes and I was like, okay, there is something which is not working for me. Started also a recording to this. So I will also put the recording in here. Um, if you want the full length of the recording, let me know in the comments, because if you're interested in the full length of the recording from this point on, then I will put it on my website, janosch-art.zone. And if you sign up for that, you, I will put it in the, in the drive and you can download the full recording. If you want the full recording of it, put the, uh, write it in the comments below. I give it to you for free. I don't mind. All right. So anyways, I started to record this at this point and I looked at this image and I thought, okay, what is wrong with it? Or what do I do, do not like? And sometimes you can also reverse that. So you can think about what do I actually like about the image? I like that the, like the starting point of the composition. So I like that I have these big statues, this epic scaling of it. I also had the idea of adding all these other statues, but I broke them in the painting to make them look like they are kind of resembling the victims of the people who made the betrayal, right? And obviously these two small um, blobs of color would be the size of humans and, and actually the guys who are doing the betrayal. But um, when you see the background, it is like a magical forest. It didn't work. Like it, it, there was no story, no nothing, nothing you could grab, you know, worked on the foreground and the midground more. So um, I basically added more structure to it, added more overgrowth, because of course, if this is something like a old place, which is lost, then there should be some moss vegetation over it. Also, it would balance out the whole red statue palette a little bit more if I add a little bit more green to just balance the image out. Um, I also add some more stairs, some more structures because I wanted to to show that it's actual a place where you could go or maybe it's an old place where people are used to go. But still I wanted to integrate all these broken statues, all these dead people, all these people who got betrayed, right? So I continue with the painting but it was still not working and I remember I spent one one to one and a half hours for the first version of it. Then I spent another one and a half hours of this. So, and it was just on adding and adjusting the foreground and midground. It still was not working. So the next step 
here was for me to, okay, maybe I have to bring it to a different location because I then took another step back, took another break. Where do I think, where do I want to have this betrayal happening? And what is the mood I want to convey? Is this magical lighting, this golden hour lighting actually working for this? So I started to play around and I added more of a warmer, more drier desert-like background with a more dawn light. So I wanted to have it more dramatic, you know? I wanted to have it a bit more, a bit more um, moody in a way where it conveys the idea I have for my painting which is something you should be doing. And this is my tip number two for you is be brave and don't be afraid to change your image to a certain point. I don't say you should overthrow your image again and again because then you can fall into the trap of maybe never finishing your image. You should see that every time that you have, every time you have the possibility to change something in your image, then there is this possibility to improve your image or to actually make it better. And this is what we want. We want to make our image to convey the idea we have in mind, but we also want to make a good image, of course, right? I mean, who doesn't want to make a good image? So it is this process of elevating your idea, looking at it from a more neutral perspective, from a outside perspective, going back and then looking at it and asking, okay, do I like this? Is this the direction I want? Is this the location I want? Is this the light I want? Write it down. If it's too hard for you to imagine, make a checklist. I tell this my mentees in my mentorship program every time. If something is so complex for you that you cannot grasp the whole thing, just break it down, like Mark Twain said, break it down in super small task. Write every little task down you have to do and make a checklist. Okay, lighting, check. Composition, check. Anatomy, check. Perspective, check. And start to just check your list. And if you do that, there is nothing that can go wrong, okay? Back to the painting, I was doing that and then I remember this because I think uh, I spent another one and a half hours or maybe just an hour on changing the background. And I liked it a little bit more, but I still wasn't like liking it to the point where I say, okay, this is what I want, right? So I was still like, mm, maybe, maybe not. I want to take a break. And I was just quickly drawing over the two guys, the two silhouettes from the beginning, just to think about who could these people be without designing them deeply because I wanted to paint the environment, right? I don't want to then also take uh, extra time to design the costumes and everything. So I just gave them a little bit of color and then I gave them this yellowish color and I imagined, okay, they could be some sort of influential, maybe politicians, and they have actually the power to betray a lot of people or their king or their queen or whatever. And then while I saw that image and the more I was looking and sitting here, I was just looking at it, had a coffee and just spent time looking at the image. I flipped the image in between flipped it horizontally, looked at it, tried to imagine if it would be a movie or a game, what would be what would be the situation I'm in right now? If I'm the player seeing them, or if I see a frame of a movie, what is it that I see? What is that what's about to happen? So more thinking, I started to, to think about that they possibly could be somewhere we could relate the situation where a lot of betrayal is happening. So I decided actually to add a pyramid in the back. And I it was just a triangle shape added with the lasso tool pretty quick. This instantly kicked the idea and made it rolling in my brain. It was like, okay, this is the location I want. So what can I take from that? I'm like, okay, I know these structures. I know what they, what they wear in the past. Imagine myself at that place. So this was absolutely crucial and important. And that's my other tip for you is imagining yourself at the location or the area you're drawing or painting, because this will always help you to find out, is it actually the thing you have in mind or is it actually the thing you want to convey? Because you want to convey emotions. You want to convey a reaction or maybe not. Maybe you just want to paint. But in best case scenario, let me phrase it like this, best case scenario, you convey a emotion. 
And it can be simple to just someone saying, wow, this is beautiful. Or someone saying, I love the light or I love the structure or I love the epicness. I love the storytelling. Like you want a reaction from your observer. Um, at least I want that. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, write it in the comments below. I want to, I want to know what you, what you think about it. Do you think often about um, conveying a emotion while you're making image, or do you just do images? I'm really curious about it. Please let me know. I was at this point where I thought, okay, this is now working for me. So all I did. Dazu habe ich Folgendes gefunden. Um, so all I did was to add. So all I did at this point was I was just thinking, how can I add a little bit more story, just a tiny bit. So I decided to add these two fellas here be behind the snake. Um, and I decided that de deliberately I wanted to put them here so that one of these guys who are planning the next betrayal is looking upwards and looking up. And this is also the reason why I put the pyramid right behind them because I have all these negative shapes which are mostly round here and I have small negative shapes which are round, a little bit oval and then I have this triangle shape inside of the oval which creates a lot of shape contrast. So this is why you, I know that most of the people will directly look there and then I put the guy looking upwards in the right angle looking up to in this angle and I wanted them to look here. I also, and this is artificial improved, so I did light and just added more light behind this guy here. Even though it maybe is not correct, it just pushes the contrast man on this figure because I want the viewer to look here. Also, one more thing, I also decided to give them these spears because I wanted to break the silhouette more. If you look from, from far away, you see that there is not much happening. If I would add more stuff on the right side of the image, then it could potentially be that the eye is stopping there. But what I wanted to is I wanted to let the eye flowing into the image directly. So what, wherever the eye is entering the image, I want that they land here where these guys are. So even if the, the eye comes from above, goes down to the guys, and if you end up here where we have the strongest dark to light contrast, we are seeing these guys down here. Okay, so this is something that you will understand the more you do images. And this is also another tip I want to say is when you do your compositions, and I know this is a really, really tough thing. Sometimes you cannot plan your composition 100%. You maybe plan the composition, then you try the composition in the sketch, it looks nice, but then you add all the detail and you realize all the extra detail takes the attention away from the actual composition you had in mind. So you need to be flexible in your process. Don't expect that everything you do right away works. You need to expect that everything you do doesn't work. And you need to have this mindset of things will not work and I will need to adjust them because I don't know how many images I did so far in my life, but I would say it never worked right away. Like done, okay, I'm good, uh, take it, take my money. Never, never. It, there's always a problem, always a thing you need to solve. But it's also cool on the other side because then the job never gets boring. I want you to keep this in mind. This is really important for me that you understand that there is no straight path to the final image. There's always left, right, left, right, up, down. You never know. Another thing is if you start, and this is, I think, the most important thing what I want to tell you on this. If you start with an image and you are, you have this happiness feeling of, this is great, I love what I'm doing. And at a certain point, um, you think like, no, it's not working. And then you work more and it's even worse. And then you have, this negative flow of like, you're falling down the rabbit hole of like, oh, this so much is not working. And then you want to put it aside. Fine, put it aside, come back another day, another two days, and then work on the image again and give you maybe five days. Work only one hour per day on an image. But when you do it for five days, you work at least five hours on that. No one is saying that you need to paint on this image for 
five hours every day like crazy um, for five days, which then 25 hours in total, and then it is supreme. It's a great image. No, I painted so many images where my skill wasn't there and I painted for 30 hours on that, but it still looked horrible, which is normal. It's, it's, it's a part of the process. You get better over time. This is why you need to manage. In total, it took me around eight hours to make this image. But of course I did not do it in one day. I took, I did it on different days. So this is really important. Besides of all the finishing touches here, um, adding a adding blur at certain areas to bring the eye to the certain points, um, adding a grain filter to make it more like a photo, like a, like a filmic look. This is just simply work in Photoshop. No 3D, just painting using images and of course, having fun with that. And it's it's the purest form of making that. Besides that, I still have one mentorship spots left for my mentorship program. Uh, you need to apply for that if you're interested in that. So you just go on janosch-art.zone, apply for the mentorship program. I will check if everything will work and then you will see if you can book it or not. Of course, it costs also money and um, so it's not free. Yeah, and if you wanna see more content like this, just follow me here, give it a thumbs up. And uh, that's it for me today. I hope this episode was helpful. You could take something out of this and I wish you a lot of luck with your own paint. Have a good day. See you soon. Ciao, ciao.